rice farming business is the most profitable business to venture into. This is because it is the most stable food in the world, especially in Asia and Africa. Rice is the third highest produce worldwide, after sugarcane and maize. In Nigeria, about 7 million tons of rice is consumed in a year. Rice is food to many people in Nigeria and is popular in homes, events and public places. You can trust our own bears to dish them in large quantities. Despite our consumption rates, it's sad that only a few percent of the rice we consume is produced in Nigeria. However, there has been an upturn since the closure of land borders for food security purposes by the Nigerian government. Also, the World Bank, Central Bank and other governmental bodies are beginning to boost the agricultural industry by providing support to smallholder rice farmers in varying degrees. As a result, the agribusiness narrative is changing and rice farming is becoming more and more profitable for rice farmers. Do you want to join the league of entrepreneurs who are creating a positive economic impact by embracing rice farming? If your answer is yes, then stay with us as we are about to show you how to start a profitable rice farming business. We are entrepreneurs that end you. We are everything to the entrepreneur, making your business journey as seamless as possible, providing consultant business services, solutions, books, and business clinics to help upskill your business. Visit our website to find out more. Get our plug and play guide for just 5,000 Naira. We have it in 35 current and trended businesses making waves in Nigeria market. It is the book holding the blueprint of ideas to choose from, including rice farming. You can either pause this video and go make your purchase on our website or head there once this lecture is done. Is that okay? All right, let's talk about rice farming. Rice farming, like other kinds of agricultural business, is capital intensive but lucrative. It produces one of the highest yields when compared to other agricultural products. For example, a well-cultivated one hectare of land produces two to three tons of rice. The farming process takes about four months between planting and harvesting. You need a large expanse of land, equipment, packaging materials, storage space, labor, transportation, and so on to start your rice farming business. Although rice farming has its challenges, besides being capital intensive and demanding large workforce, it's still a very lucrative business to venture into by aspiring entrepreneurs. To start your rice farming business, you need to follow the steps to come. Step one, create a business plan. Rice farming requires adequate planning and conducting a feasibility study. One of the ways to ensure that you consider every aspect of the business is by drafting a business plan. The business plan will serve as a guide on the steps to take to make the vision achievable. While preparing your business plan, you will take into consideration the elements of the business such as location, marketing, funding, and so on. The business plan is a breathing document that can be updated at any time as the business grows. With a well-written business plan, you can access loans from financial institutions or seek funding from investors. Step two, register your business. After creating a business plan, the next step is to register your business. In rice farming, aside from registering with the Corporate Affairs Commission, you will need to register with agencies like the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFTA, and the Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria, WIFA, and so on. The Corporate Affairs Commission is responsible for registering businesses in Nigeria. There are different business structures to choose from, and there are different factors that will influence the type of business structure you choose. You can go directly to the CAC website and register your business, or let firms like Redalia handle your business registration seamlessly for you. Redalia is a solution center for the entrepreneur, and it is widely known for providing business solutions to business owners. To get your NAVDAC registration, visit the official website of NAVDAC to start and complete the process. The next step is to secure funding. Rice farming is capital intensive, as we mentioned earlier, and requires huge investment in terms of human resources and finance. If you don't have enough funds to start this business, you can approach investors or meet with partners who have the same vision as you do. As part of the Nigerian government's efforts to boost the food supply for its citizens, funding is readily available for agricultural businesses. Therefore, you can access government grants or loans at low interest rates from commercial or microfinance banks. Furthermore, there are other benefits and supports aside from money available for agri-focused businesses like tech support. To access these opportunities, you need a well-written business plan. If your funding is secure or you have the requisite capital to start this business, you are on your way to becoming a bona fide farmer in Nigeria. Let's look at the step-by-step -step plan on rice farming business. Step 1. Choose a quality seed. 
The essential step to rice production is seed selection. There are different varieties of rice seeds suitable for various ecologies such as lowland, upland, deep water, mangrove swamp, and so on. Good rice seeds are resistant to disease and yield much grain during harvest. Therefore, you need to choose a quality seed suitable for the environment. It will grow in. Step 2. Choose the right land. After choosing the seed to plant, the next step is to choose a suitable land area. Rice requires slightly more water to produce than other grains. Therefore, it is advisable to choose lands with water retention capacities, such as clay or loamy soil that contains organic matter. Rice can be grown in different environments as long as there is water. But, it is advisable to plant in ecological areas where rice is traditionally grown, such as Kebi, Benue, Ikiti, Chikawa, Okun, Kaduna, Kano, and other states known for rice production in Nigeria. Step 3. Land Preparation For rice farming, land preparation needs to be done to put the soil in the best condition for the best yield. It involves plowing and harrowing to till and level the soil. You can till with a hoe, tractor, or other machinery. This will allow the seeds to be planted at the right depth and help with weed control. Land leveling is also important and should be done as it will help the seedling become more established and reduce erosion. The land for rice farming is better prepared from November to February when the rainy season is over. As the rainy season approaches, the land would have been ready for planting. However, if your land is in the savanna region, your land preparation can start in February. Some questions we've been asked are, which machine is more important to acquire when considering this business? Do you know where to get the machine and how much does it cost? Let's imagine Lagos was an option for farming. Where would you suggest? Well, luckily for you and everyone interested in this business, you can find all these answers and more in our book, a step-by-step -step guide on how to start a rice farming business for just 2,000 naira, or better still, Buy our plug and play book. You can purchase the 35 booming business ideas and step by step guides on how to start them. Here you get all the info on rice farming and 34 orders for just 5,000 naira. Isn't that a juicy deal? Head over to our website at entrepreneurs.ng right now to get yours. You can also subscribe to our channel so that you can get much more interesting content such as this. Step 4 Choose a planting method. After the land has been prepared, the next step is to plant the seed. This planting can be done in two ways, direct seeding and transplanting. Direct seeding involves drilling or broadcasting dry seed or pre-germinated seeds by hand or by machine. In rain-fed and deep water ecosystems, the dry seed is manually broadcast onto the soil surface and then incorporated either by plowing or harrowing while the sun is still dry. While in irrigated areas, seeds are normally pre-germinated prior to broadcasting. With direct seeding, which can begin to affect the plants at the early stage, but with the use of herbicides, they can be controlled. When the seedlings are raised in the nursery, they are transferred from the seedbed to the wet field. It requires less seed and is an effective method to control weeds. Seedlings can also be transplanted by machine or hand, and this is the most popular technique across Asia. Step 5. Water Management Rice is highly sensitive to water shortages and the process of water maintenance differs from one ecological area to another. Therefore, you need to maintain the water level in the field up to 5 cm one week after transplanting until the grain matures. Step 6. Apply fertilizer. Different fertilizers can be applied at different stages of the growth of the rice. This means you need to apply specific nutrients at different times. You need to speak to a pedologist to advise you on the right organic fertilizer to use, the right quantity and the right time to use them to ensure you have the best yield. Step 7. Control weed and pest. Weed, pests, viruses are all enemies to rice plants and can reduce the yield or value of the crop. Climatic factors, improper irrigation, overuse of insecticides, weather condition and high rates of nitrogen fertilizer application exposes rice plants to diseases. So the sooner you begin to treat the plant and fight these elements, the better for you. Weeds can be managed through hand weeding or herbicide application. Pests like termites, armyworms, insects, nematodes, rodents, birds, pathogens and so on can be managed by using chemical controls. Step 8. Harvest 
and trash. Depending on the seed variety, rice crops can be harvested after about 105 to 150 days of planting. About the time when the plants are already turning yellow or brown, it involves cutting, stacking, handling, threshing, cleaning, and hauling. Harvesting can be done manually or mechanically. Manual harvesting involves cutting the rice crop with sickles and knives, while mechanical harvesting involves using reapers to cut down the rice. Thereafter, you begin to thresh. Threshing involves separating the paddy grain from the rest of the crop or a mat or tampaline. It should be done either immediately or within a day or two after harvesting. Also, after harvesting, you can plant leguminous crops like beans, chickpeas, lentils, soy in the farm. This will serve as organic matter and help to maintain the soil nutrients for another planting season. Let's talk about post-production. After threshing, the next step is to field dry the paddy and then meal. First, paddy is dried to bring down the moisture content to no more than 30% for milling. You can manually dry paddy by spreading them on a clean concrete floor, mat, on top of leaf, while they sun dry for one to three days. After drying, you then meal. Milling is a crucial step in the post-production of rice. It is done to remove the husk and the bran layers to produce an eligible white rice kernel. A good meal can achieve paddy to rice conversion rate of up to 72% but smaller. Inefficient meals often struggle to achieve 60%. Also, there should be a minimum number of broken kernels in the conversion process. Now let's look at marketing. If you successfully follow the above process, you will have rice grains ready to be sold. The next step is to package your rice for sale and consumption. In packaging, ensure to have your logo, farm address, name, and other identification numbers branded on the packaging sacks. It's expected that during the business plan stage, you already know who your target market is. It's nice to have a ready market. Have people ready to purchase your rice even before the planting process. To market your rice, you can create a website and social media pages where your farming activities can be showcased and others booked. You can invest in radio, television, or billboard advertisements to create awareness. Most importantly, if you produce quality rice, free of weevil and other kinds of ants, people will patronize you willingly and this will reduce your marketing costs and increase your profits. Do you want to get a comprehensive crash course with the exact cost of starting this business and 34 other profitable businesses? Visit our website today to find out more and get your own copy. We can give your business global exposure by telling your story on entrepreneurs.ng. Contact us today. Let's get started. You can buy the 35 booming business ideas amongst other transforming business books. You can register for the business clinic, which happens quarterly. Imagine six professionals taking six courses that would guarantee your business in the limelight. It is real and that's not all. We handhold you for one month, taking you through each stage of your business. Visit our website to enjoy all of our consultant services and business solutions. Just like every other agricultural business, rice farming is a profitable agribusiness to venture into. Although it can be time consuming, capital intensive and require expertise, it is a good business area to invest in, especially with its local demand and very high export potential. Are you currently dealing in the rice farming business and would like to share how to it? Or are you an aspiring rice farmer in need of guidance? We would like to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook to see more of our activities. For now, it's bye-bye.